All right, so I'm just making this clip real quick to let you guys know that I'm about to pull this motor. Uh, I don't really know what video it's going to go in. I just wanted to make sure I had it on video before I did it so that I can have a time of events, I guess. Uh, this has been sitting in here since I blew it up, since I made that video about me being an idiot and lifting the head and the video where I pulled the head off. Uh, it has not changed, nothing has changed. Um, other than I did pull the transmission off because I put the clutch out of this car in the blue car. So there should be really easy to pull. I do not have an engine stand for it right now, so I will have to figure that out. I may have to take an engine off one of my stands for this one. But now we can further access the damage, something that I've been dreading. And that's why this is still in this car so many months later, because I'm dreading this. All right, so I got it out, it took like 30 minutes. You gotta realize there was no transmission on it. The head was off and the car didn't have a cooling system in it. So it was really easy to just pull out. And you guys are going to kill me. Uh, well, some of you guys maybe, but hear me out. This happened and I lost like a lot of motivation. All right, like it was really sad to me because it only lasted a couple thousand miles and you know, it costs a lot of money. So it kind of it sucked. I had no motivation and it sat out in the car since not quite a year, uh, but it sat in the car with no head on it. I had a trash bag on it. I had everything oiled. I had the hood on the car. I had the cabin air filter, like the, the cowl in there and everything. So water wouldn't come through the vent on the hood. I tried and that is oil sitting in there from when I covered this thing in oil. You can tell that is oil, but look at that. Ouch, 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 ouch. I mean, some people would probably send that, but because what happened to this engine anyways, it was gonna need redecked and actually bored over again because of the grooves, which I can still feel terrible and the cylinder walls. So. Really all we're doing today is taking the pan off this engine and we're gonna try to pull a piston and see if these pistons are okay yet. Cause this is what I paid the most for. You know, these are diamond pistons, they're about $1,500 and they're beautiful. All right, so those two engines on the floor now because I needed the engine stands. One for my old motor here and then one for my S52 that I'm building. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the pan off here and take the oil pump off and windage tray. And then I'm going to undo a rod and push up one of these pistons to the top here so I can see basically what the skirts of these pistons look like. Because if the sides of these pistons look good yet, uh, they might be I would maybe discolored looking or whatever. There may be visual. Uh, damage, I guess, if you want to call it. But as long as I can't feel it with the fingernail, I think these are fine. You know, these are forged pistons, uh, maybe new rings and wrist pins, and I'm probably good to go. That is fingers crossed. Um, I mean, like when you pull stock pistons out of these motors, uh, you'll know, you, you'll see that the skirts of the pistons are discolored even. That's normal. So we might see some of that. Uh, I'm just hoping we're not seeing, you know, really deep grooves or anything from possibly rubbing the actual walls of the cylinders dry, maybe from having oil pump issues. Uh, if you guys don't know, this engine died from overboosting, but truly died because I had a bad aftermarket oil pump in this thing for a while and I did not note it, notice it. Um, so that's why I had to actually down this engine once I pulled the head and seen how scored the walls were of the cylinders. I'm guessing that's what caused it. I don't know. Yet. Oh yeah, the forbidden milkshake. And dude, I swear these stink bugs, they'll go, they'll get in anywhere. Like I don't, I guess it went down a coolant jacket or something, but obviously it did not make it through winter, so. Jokes on him, but yeah, that's I like that. You can, you can even see some of that green coolant that I used. You know, just flame away, boys. That's probably why it blew up. And that's an ugly color. That's like, 
that's like metallic. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yup. Yup. This is, you know, these are just reasons I didn't want to do this. Well, there's my max fitting rods in all their glory. Uh, rods are fine. I might need to get new bolts, maybe. They've been torqued down a couple times because I did do bearings on this. Moment of truth right here. I don't freaking know. I mean, is that really going to affect this piston once I put new rings on it? You know, does that really matter? Uh, I, I just know on stock motors even that gets discolored right there. But those are cast pistons, so this doesn't really get discolored. It gets shiny. I don't freaking know. But I really want these pistons to be good yet. I mean, look at that. Such a beautiful piston. Oh, no, it's, it's smooth. I don't know enough. Talk to some people and go from there. Just figured I'd show you guys that this thing is still alive here and what we're about to do to it. Oh man, it feels weird sitting in this thing. Kind of makes me sad a little bit, but it smells like an E46. <laughs> uh, ooh. That wasn't like that. Good thing I have another one somewhere. But yeah, it has a PSV1 in it. Um, and then I have fuel pressure and then I use the old Gretti boost controller. I just love it. I don't know why. So I'll probably keep this same setup in here. No reason to change it. And then I have my fuel pump switch down here. And factory navigation came in this car. I didn't do that. I just kept it in here because I thought it was kind of cool because you don't see them a lot. And then if you go down here, uh, <laughs> so if you guys followed this car a year ago, you probably know why that got installed. Because out of oil pump, that was bad and that's the main reason the engine was a total loss on this but i'll pop the hood on this nothing to see oh, nothing to see at all <laughs> other than the huge intercooler that's in this i love that that was brand new too um it has terrible harness on it get that out of the way but i got all nuke stuff on here and it was new too i didn't get very much life out of that before the engine went i mean it's still fine all dash 10 lines whole fuel system and then uh yeah there's no engine in here not even a cooling system or a transmission Still got the original B Racing sticker on it. All right guys, so this is a huge moment for me. I've been collecting parts for this red car since the day it blew up. And I know I haven't been showing any of the red car, and you guys know what I'm talking about. The Hell Rock car, that's probably why a lot of you guys are here. And that's where I got the name for the channel, Hell Rock Garage. So it's probably echoing a little bit in here and I apologize for that. But I got a bunch of parts for this car and my goal is to throw down a thousand horsepower on a dyno at least once in my life. Um, I'd like this build to be set up for a thousand horsepower, not necessarily just always on it, like on kill all the time. Um, but that is our goal, and I'm going to show you some of the parts that we have for it. This engine here is an M52 V28. This has not been machined, this is not built or anything yet. This will be the engine used though. It came from a junkyard for like $200. This was in the blue car a couple videos ago. I did a teardown on this and showed you guys it had broken ring lands, unfortunately. And uh, cause it was on, it was actually hitting like 20 something pounds of boost. Uh, but this is the engine we're gonna use. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my parts on here. Um, it's a lot of PPF stuff, beautiful stuff that you can buy from D-Racing Tuning. Um, basically, if you're going to turbo an E46, go small turbo or go PPF. It really depends on your price range and if you want to go tubular or if you want to go cats. And this will be a top mount setup. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put the parts in here. Starting off, we have a PPF intake. And all of these parts are 20 degree. So the engine sits at 30 something factory. 
this is going to straighten the engine out just a little bit so we can fit a bigger turbo over here um, so we're not going to be interfering with the strut tower. Um, so it's all 20 degree, got 20 degree engine mounts. We're going to mock all this up, look at what we're dealing with. I actually have not seen this stuff together so this is going to be awesome for me too. I've been collecting these parts for a while and I haven't even been able to picture what it's going to look like. Uh, I just hope it's beautiful. Um, I'm not sure if this is a valve cover I'm going to be using, but it will be single Thanos. This next build will probably be single Thanos. We'll see about it. Really depends on the option I do for cans on this car, which I haven't figured out yet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this turbo on. And our turbo is a 7170 dual ball bearing. Beautiful. From Pulsar, which you can order Pulsar from the Racing's website. Oh gosh, that's going to be tight. because we're pretty close to this valve cover, which I do not think I'll be running a plastic valve cover, especially with top mount, because I've learned my lesson that you're going to melt the valve cover. You're gonna melt it. The PPF billet engine mount arms, these will set the engine at your 20 degree angle. Uh, I'll go ahead and put those on, just roughly, just so we can see what they look like. I'll show you guys in a second. I'll show you guys up close in a second, I promise. I know you can't see it right now, it's killing you. Last night I got this delivery, uh, 88,000 mile or so roughly M3 drivetrain swap, six speed and all drive shaft. Uh, this will be going into the red car. So as long as everything's solid here, uh, shout out to the guy who was actually local to me that hooked me up with this setup and delivered it awesome guy uh, I'll try to put his YouTube channel in the description he doesn't do a lot of e46 stuff anymore obviously unfortunately he parted it out and I'm lucky to have this but beautiful beautiful stuff um, I have the uh, garage stick solid bushings for it and stuff like that and it's crazy how big this input shaft is on the m3 six speed but just want to let you guys know we are moving forward with the red car and look how sad these bmw performance rotors are right now they're shot but luckily we have fresh rotors for the rear with the m rear calipers which i don't really think it's a crazy upgrade but you know i got them so i'm going to use them uh, I'll keep their 330 brakes on the front for now. Here is the RTD self-centering shifter that came with this purchase, uh, which is beautiful piece. I've never had a self-centering shifter. I've had body mounts. I don't care much for body mount shifters. I love my UUC Evo shifter in my blue car now, originally in the red car, but we'll have to use this because this is actually SMG trans and the conversion was basically done by having this really heavy duty self-centering spring. Um, we'll see how it drives. Worst case scenario, I can do the conversion kit on this trans, but we're gonna see how this uh, goes first. But I mean, this is this piece here is beautiful also. I, I, I've never owned anything this nice, but here we are, here we are moving up in the world. All this fancy M3 stuff, but I'm so happy to do a red car update 
for you guys because I've been walking past this car for the past year and a half in my driveway like it doesn't even exist. Thanks for the support guys, I really appreciate it. We're gonna keep on moving forward with all of this. And same to you guys, keep on going, don't give up. If you got goals, keep chasing them. Not everything happens overnight. And this definitely isn't gonna happen overnight. This is just a really solid start.